G'day, possums. Yeah, no idea what that was all about either. Maybe it's too early in the day to be doing this, but let's give it a go. This is tying in with our sessions with regards to working through the work on the mathematics, mathematics methods one and two textbook for some of my students. Now I know this exercise you're a little bit confused about, so I'm going to try and do what I can to maybe explain some of the background. I can't answer the questions. Um, simply because there is no real way of teaching. This is about language. This is about sort of understanding the basis that links between numbers and word questions. And it's something that traditionally a lot of people are, are quite bad at. So, realistically speaking, this all revolves around the idea that one letter can stand for an unknown. If we don't know something, we can choose a letter. And predominantly it's X. Uh, it doesn't have to be, you can you choose whatever letter you like, but most people tend to choose X. Um, so what does that have to do with anything? Well, <clears throat> if we look at the idea of consecutive numbers, what does consecutive mean? Well, consecutive means one after the other. So for example, the numbers three, four, and five are consecutive. What is the link between each of those? Well, we'll say we start somewhere in our number line and we don't know what our start letter is, uh, sorry, our start number is, but we're trying to work out how to get from the next number. Well, let's imagine we actually have our start number as x. The trick here is knowing, well, what's the next number? Well, it sort of goes back to understanding that, well, how do I get between 3 and 4? Well, conceptually, you add the number 1. And how do I get from 4 to 5? Well, you add the number 1 to the previous number. But more importantly, what happens? How do I get from 3 to 4? And how do I get from 3 to 5? Because at this moment, I know the number 3, so I can find my next number, but I don't know my number here. Well, it's the idea that x, the next number is x plus 1. And hopefully, you realize that the link between 3 and 5 means that it's x plus 2 is my next number. And this could theoretically just keep going on. So now we've turned sort of a number theory into a form of algebra. And say, for example, we knew that these three numbers added to make 27. Well, we could now theoretically go on and say, well, okay, we know that if we add this and this and this, we make 27. We come up with sort of a basic idea of numbers or a basic idea of how to do the questions. What's the link between even numbers and odd numbers? Well, again, if you have the odd numbers 1, 3, and 5, there is a difference of 2 between each of these numbers in the same way as 2, 4, and 6. Now, later on in the textbook, it's important to know the difference between how to get an odd number and an even number, but that's sort of beyond the scope of what I'm talking about today. But the idea is that if we choose something and we don't know what it is, we can call it x, and then we try and relate the information around that x to something else. That's uh, all very generic and not really sure, so let's have an example where we can actually try and find an answer to an actual question. And as if by magic, I even have a whiteboard now. Life is too good. Um, it's surprising how much this area of a rectangle, perimeters of rectangles and general rectangles, comes up in maths, uh, because it sort of can help with a lot of external knowledge. And so let's read the question. An area of a rectangle whose perimeter is 1.08 meters if it is 8 centimeters longer than it is wide. Well, I suppose the first thing to notice with this question is that there are actually different units. One's given in meters and one is given in centimeters. So we need to watch that. But as my math teacher said to me at school, a diagram saves a thousand words. So let's draw a picture of something roughly resembling a rectangle just so I can visualize. Well, it says that the 8 centimeters longer than it is wide. So we have a rectangle who is 8 centimeters longer than it's wide. But it's not telling me how wide it is. That's not a problem. Let's just choose x as my value of width, which now means, well, that's very easy. I can now say that my length is going to be x plus 8. The reason I'm adding on 8 is simply because we are saying that it's 8 centimeters longer than the other side. Whoa, I'm off. I can find my area now. Well, no, I can't find my area now because it doesn't really help. But what it does say is my perimeter is 1.08 meters. Well, firstly, let's know that 1.08 meters is exactly the same as eight, uh, 108 centimeters. And so now I have my units as the same. Well, how, what's the perimeter? Well, the perimeter is all the way around the edge. So I now know then that x plus x plus 8 plus x plus x plus 8 
must be equal to 108. We've been told that information here. Well, now that we have this, well, it's gone back to our basic algebra from the previous presentation where I can now collect like terms. Well, how many x's have I got? I've got four x's. And how many numbers have I got? I've got 16 is equal to 108. Ooh, and the four and the x are kissing, so we'll leave those alone for the moment and we'll move the plus 16 over to the other side. And so the four x stays and the 108 stays because we don't like Q jumpers, but the plus 16 moves to the other side and becomes a minus 16. We'll move the 4x closer, and 108 minus 16 is 92. And now we can go back to our kissing, because we love our kissy kisses. And we know once again we want to get the x on its own, so that means we move the 4 and the times over to the other side. And that leaves x on its own. It becomes 92 divided by 4. And x is equal to 23. We'll put the centimetres. Yay! I've done the answer. I can move on to the next question. I'm going to get full marks and the world goes mad. Not necessarily. And this is part of the problem about reading the question, or RTQ, as I so like to put in my lessons. And any students who turn around and suggest I put extra letters in, I will deny it strenuously. But the fact is, we find the area that's what it wants. It wants the area of a rectangle. Well, I suppose I'm now one step closer because I can redraw my triangle and I know that because x is 23, I know the length of that side and if x plus 8 is there, that's 31. So I can now finish my calculation and say that the area is equal to 23 times 31, which is equal to 713 and don't forget my units centimetres squared. I suppose at the end of the day, we could argue that the perimeter was given in meters, so maybe we could put that area in meters squared. We'll leave that to your intelligence to try and work out how to do that. But as a hint, you could change the areas back into meters and do 0 0.31 multiplied by 0 0.23. That will give your area in meters squared. So the general idea about this question was finding the area. But again, it was without knowing something. We didn't know what the uh, width was, and so we just chose something. We said, well, okay, if we don't know the width is, let's just choose something to allow that to be. Well, let's move on to our next question. And we now have something very similar to the idea that we started previously. Find three consecutive odd numbers with a sum of 150. First things first, let's actually change that because that should have been three consecutive whole numbers. And I'm not recording this presentation again. So we'll now make that three consecutive whole numbers. We go back, interestingly then, to the idea of what's a whole number. Well, it's a number that doesn't have decimals. We don't know what our first number is. We don't know what our first whole number is. So let's just call it x. There's my first number. How do I get to my next number? Well, as I said at the start, it's x plus 1 will get me the next number in a sequence, and x plus 2 will give me that next number. So there are my three consecutive whole numbers. We know that they sum. Well, how do you find the sum? Well, you simply sum by adding them together. So we get x plus x plus 1 plus x plus 2 is equal to 150. And something that seems quite daunting at the beginning now just becomes, once again, a nice, simple algebraic equation. I've got three x's and I've got the number three so I've got 150. I want to leave the three and the x together so I'll move the plus three to the other side so that I can then get three x is equal to 150 minus three. Three x is equal to 147 so three kissy kissy x is equal to 147. x is equal to 147 divided by 3 and x becomes equal to 49. Oh, does it need any units? Nope, it doesn't need any units at all. So I finished the question, job done, I can move on to the next question. Nope, once again it says find three consecutive whole numbers. All we've done is actually just find the first one. So for completeness, we need to say, therefore, our numbers are 49 
50 and 51. And just as a check, if we do 49 plus 50 plus 51, we do indeed get 150. Smiley face, very happy. All right, so again, we didn't know what the number was. Let's just choose a letter, in this case X, and let's move on to the next question. Now this is the last question in the series because, you know, I, to be honest with you, I could go on like this for days, but it comes around knowing the outside knowledge as well. So Adam normally takes five hours to travel between Melbourne and Geelong. Adam obviously is dragging himself between the two, but anyway. One day he increases his speed by four kilometers an hour and finds the journey takes half an hour less than the normal time. Find his normal speed. Well, first things first, what have we got? We've got that, we've got five hours given for his normal time to travel between Melbourne and Geelong, but we don't actually know how far it is between Melbourne and Geelong. Well, we do know science, and we do know a little bit of maths, and we do know that the formula that there is distance is equal to speed times time. Actually, I've just run out of room there, but moving on. Oh, my handwriting is not good on this. So, right, um, distance equals speed times time. Well, I don't know what his speed is either. So let's say that x is going to be equal to his speed. So we now know then that the distance between Melbourne and Geelong, and we're going to say that d is equal to speed, we don't know, x times the time, but we do know that. We know the distance is going to be 5x now. Now you're probably sitting there going, well, well, why does that matter? Why do I need to know the distance? Well, it's the one thing that's common between both of his journeys. He's obviously going between Melbourne and Geelong. Once, it takes him for five hours. And next, and notice it's interesting, they said half an hour less than the normal time. So they're asking you to do a little bit more work. So the next time he did it, he actually only takes 4.5 hours. But it's exactly the same distance. So using the same formula, how do I know now, or how do I now know what the next part of this equation is? Well, distance is equal to speed times time. We now know the distance is going to be 5x. What's his speed? Do we know his speed? Well, yes, he does. Look, one day he increases his speed by 4 kilometers an hour. Well, if we chose x to be a speed before, then actually it's going to be x plus 4 now which we are going to multiply by his time of 4.5. Well, let's change that to 9 over 2 to make calculations nice. And I've hit one of those all too familiar problems in maths with regards to, ooh, when is it appropriate to use brackets and when is it appropriate not to use brackets? Well, in this particular instance, if I don't put this down properly, that looks like it's only the 4 that's multiplied by the 9 over 2, but actually it isn't. It's all of that. So putting brackets around tells me that I'm going to multiply everything by 9 over 2. So again, now I've got a nice algebraic equation that I can go off and actually solve. Well, as we've done before, I don't like a divider by 2. So what am I going to do? I'm going to multiply absolutely everything by 2. Well, if I multiply this side by 2, I'm going to get 10x. And if I multiply this side by 2, I'm just going to get the 9. Now I'm going to just make it slightly nicer to make it more I don't know, familiar to what we've seen before. Now, yes, we could move the 9 here, because if you remember from a previous one, we could move the 9 under, but I don't actually know how that's going to make 10 over 9 nice. I think in this instance, we'll just let each of the prisoners kiss the prison guard and escape. So we get 10x is equal to 9x plus 36. And, oh, well, that's slightly nicer. I've got an x term on one side. I've got an x term on the other. So I can put them on the same side because that's the rules of algebra. So the 9x moves over here. So I get 10x minus 9x equals 36. Or x is equal to 36. x is my speed. What did they want me to find? They wanted me to find my speed. And so I can now put my speed as 36 kilometers per hour double underline it and put my smiley face because the world is good. Now again, that could seem like a complicated question. It isn't. It's the idea, firstly, that distance equals speed times time and using that because on each journey, the distance is the same. 